I'm Adam Moss, and this is Moss Models. Good morning, and welcome to Moss Models. Today we've got an interesting little product from FreeSky called the FWTM Lite. That is the FreeSky Wireless Trainer Module. And Lite, of course, denotes that this is the Lite format module. This fits Lite bays in the Tyrannus X Lite, the Tyrannus X9 Lite, as well as all the tandem and twin radios. Uh, it should also fit a nanotype uh, bay just fine in this particular case. Uh, it should be fully compatible with them. Uh, and what this is, is this is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a wireless trainer module. You bind the student radio to this module. It registers and binds just like a regular Access or ACCST D16 V2 receiver. So you've got a bind button if you're in ACCST mode. That's a registration button if you're in Access mode. It's got a little LED light to tell you it's up and good. It's got a standard light module bay interface. But it's only, as far as I'm aware, using three pins on that. Uh, the two for power as well as one for S bus out. So you do need a radio that has S bus out if you just want to plug and play. The other piece that it's got here is it's got a standard JR style trainer jack. And that is PPM out. That will let you plug this in to a radio that does not support S bus out, S bus trainer in the module bay. Uh, you do have to power the module still. Right now, that means that it needs to be plugged into a lighter nano format module bay, but if your radio doesn't accept the S bus trainer input on a module bay pin, you can just get a shorty uh, trainer cable, which is really a standard 1 8 inch or 3.5 millimeter audio cable, stereo. Pl plug it in there, plug it into the radio, and you get trainer. And this is on the instructor radio, so the student radio is just bound wirelessly like any other receiver, and they send it over there. Now, why did FreeSky come out with this? Well, the FreeSky uh, system today uses their Para Bluetooth wireless trainer module. It's built into all the tandem and twin radios, and it's built into the non-base spec Tyrannus radios and all the Horus radios in some form. The problem is, twofold. One is inherent to the system and the other is inherent to the radios that have the system. The first one is, very simply, unlike for example Spectrum, where you get any DSMX radio you can bind wirelessly to the wireless trainer system, you need a student radio that has a pair-up module. It doesn't have to be expensive. Zoom out here so we can see a little bit more of my bench because this is an, X, is an X9 Lite S. This is the cheapest radio with a para module. The X9 Lite does not have the para module, but I generally don't recommend it because it also doesn't have USB charge, and the Lite S has USB charge, which is worth the extra 20 or so bucks for the, uh, the Lite S, in my opinion. You also get Hall sensor gimbals on the S model, uh, whereas the regular one just has pot sensor gimbals, and I think the Hall sensor gimbals are a longer lasting solution. You just can get more life out of the transmitter because the gimbals don't wear out the same way. And don't mind the fact that I broke the switch. I knocked this thing off the desk. It landed on the switch. The switch broke. It'll happen on anything. I could have done that on a jetty and it would have happened. But the rest of the radio held up just fine. No other damage. So getting back to Para. Biggest problem, not every radio's got Para. Even if it speaks free sky, it doesn't have Para. Second problem is Para forces you to manually reconnect at the beginning of the session. So you're getting all set up, you got to go tell the two radios to start talking. They won't auto-link because it's using a, a Bluetooth module that you might say use for telemetry feed over to your phone if you want to, or a tablet if you want to track GPS while you're flying another model. Um, so the Bluetooth system does not automatically come up and link. For the para module, it's not like a set of headphones. That's been a usability annoyance for me with para. Um, 
and I know it has been for a number of other people. I know of a couple of people who've actually had to land an aircraft and uh, relink the radios because they dropped the link and it did not want to come back automatically. Uh, typically what's happened in that case is the student for some reason has powered off the radio, powered the radio back on, the link doesn't come up. Uh, it's not something like you just drop the link. Uh, dropping the link, it'll reconnect. Uh, but rebooting one of the radios, it won't. So, how does the FWTM solve that? Well, at the end of the day, it's basically a receiver. So it works like a receiver does. You bring up the radio, you got the right module select, model selected, you've got the, the RF live, it's powered on, links right up. Uh, same experience you get on the Spectrum in terms of link. Now, the other question is, so how does it work? There's two, I'm gonna show three different use cases here. Uh, in all cases, this is, this right now, is bound and registered to my X9 light as a receiver. So let me fire that sucker up. You'll notice, uh, yes, I don't have fail safe on the radio. That's because this is the model uh, memory that I've set up for this. So first thing I'm gonna show you is the experience going forward. This is on Ethos 1.5 and later where you have SBUS trainer input already enabled. So we're gonna take my X20. This is my, uh, I'm using this as a test unit for Ethos 1.5. So you clip the module in, turn it over, fire it up. And it looks like I have a problem on the latest uh, Ethos Nightly. So I've got the uh, X20 running the latest build of uh, Ethos 1.5.0. I uh, did figure out what triggered my emergency mode, which you just saw. Simply put, this is a nightly, things change. Sometimes a model file from an old nightly just does not agree with the new one. Usually you get an error, but this was triggering an emergency mode. Don't fly 1.5. It's for testing only at this point until it hits pre-release. Until we get some, or maybe some uh, release candidates, it is a testing only, don't fly it. Do try it out, but understand it's for desk use only right now. And what we've got is uh, the FWTM. You'll notice there's no wiring and wiggle and we got movement. And I'll just zoom in on the screen a little bit more so you can see that better. Uh, and yeah, that's movement. And you'll notice that I have, there's some new settings there. So trainer mode as the usual master and slave, but link mode is trainer cable, Bluetooth, SBUS external module or CPPM external module. So this will support old school linker modules. If you've got an old, a linker module running PPM, it's gonna work with this. The new, uh, if you got a linker module with SBUS, it's going to work. Or the uh, the FWTM and FWTM Lite, they work with this. Um, and that is really it from a uh, Ethos 1.5 perspective. I'll move on and we'll get back to the other uh, current Ethos 149 setups and a little surprise at the end. So we're going to show this with the X18 on the... Um, on Ethos 149, fire it up, and I just need to go set up a mod model that has trainer configured. So this is uh, the model for my Livewire Champ. Uh, that's a lovely little classic three-channel trainer. So we'll just go, go over to trainer. I've got this set to master. Wireless is off, active condition is SF, because I've got a momentary on the left. I swapped around the those on there. And we're just going to do this. You can see I, I leave the module bay uncovered, because I'm putting modules on here all the time. And you see that, saw that clip in and power on. Now the one thing I did have to do, just to be clear, is in RF system, 
I've gone to the external module and put it on. The settings you pick don't matter. You just need to turn that on. If you're not using the external module for that. Let's go into trainer. And what will happen here is I'm just, actually I'm going to just swap these two because it's going to be easier. So you can see. Ah, and I just realized, you know what I probably need? Let's turn it on. Let's turn it on. I forgot a step. And that is because Ethos 149 does not have support for SBUS in on the module bay. So we're just going to plug into the trainer and we're going to plug in to the radio. And you can see I am getting trainer. And actually that will always show now if we go if we go to outputs outputs so nothing nothing a pull there there we go I turn this off nothing 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 turn this on fail safe warning click through reconnected beautifully turn this off obviously nothing the radio is not on And there we go. Automatic reconnect. Works beautifully. You do have to have the cable until one Ethos 1.5 uh, ships. That will support the uh, SBUS uh, in the module bay as, a, uh, as an input method. By the way, the X9 light and the uh, Tyrannus X lights uh, do support SBUS in on the module bay as a trainer source. Uh, I don't have it set up right now because this is my student radio and I'm essentially showing what you would see if you're coming to, you want to come want to go up uh, for a uh, trial flight on my live wire champ this is the radio i'm going to hand to you this is the radio i'm going to be flying now to show you something neat so just put the uh Put the X18 away, and we have a NX8 with the trainer adapter. Now this is uh, so. In this case, the uh, the NX and IX series radios do not have a dedicated trainer port. They have a serial port back here, which is kind of a module interface, uh, as well as a trainer port. So you need to get this. I think it's about 10 bucks American. It was 15 bucks Canadian. This is a trainer adapter. And we're just gonna plug in. And I'm I'm stealing power from the X18 because I don't have an adapter yet to power the uh, module directly. I'm gonna bodge something up that I'll be able to clip the, mo the module in and a 2S, uh, 2S radio in. So let's go over to monitor. And don't mind the channel mapping because the way I've got this set up right now the channel mapping makes no sense. I just literally plugged this thing in, turned on trainer, and you can see the channel mapping is all, all sorts of messed up. To, because this is, there's two reasons for that. First off, this is a sailplane model. This is AAER. It's not. TAER, which is standard spectrum. It's not AETR, which is what the model on this is, and standard Futaba or Free Sky. It's AAER because this is a sailplane model. And that's actually, so I got my left aileron, my right aileron, elevator, rudder, right flap, left flap, and AX2. And the biggest thing is, is that means that when this is on, I'm getting something on channel two, but it's ignoring what I'm sending on channel one. Channel two is, this thing's still expecting to get TAER from here, and then it's remapping it to AAER on the output. So, elevator, which is channel two on here, is, this is expecting aileron input. So you're getting aileron from the elevator, nothing from this, because there's no throttle channel here, and that's channel one input on the trainer. 
and then I've got R is still in the same spot and my throttle is on. It's so throttle here, but it's elevator here because it's spec expecting TAER. But it works. And if you put together a little uh, little power pack for the module, you'd be able to hang it on your belt clip, plug into the NX, and then you can use any Free Sky radio ever made as long as your RF firmware is up to date. It's from the original Tyrannus X9D through to the latest Shiniest X20 Pro. We'll be able to talk to that module as long as your RF firmware is up to date. It's access, ACC STD16, and it binds automatically to both FCC and LBT firmware on the radio. Uh, that's a unique feature of the Archer Pluses. The only other way to get that on a receiver is to run unique firmware on your older ACC ST receiver, but those don't bind access. This does, and the Archer Pluses do. So oh, there you have it, FWTM. It is an awesome little module. I am so happy that FreeSky did this 